Hey everyone, this is Chris from Grimsby in the UK. You're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs. Enjoy. Good day everybody. We're in Red Deer, Alberta. We have an empty flatbed behind us. And we're on our way to pick up some lumber in Edmonton, Alberta, that's going down to Iowa. Somebody down there wants some Canadian lumber, and you guessed it, we're gonna bring it to them. You want some lumber, you get some lumber. We're gonna get out of this parking lot here first. Why was that guy parked there? Was he delivering? Probably delivering. Red Deer has gone all roundabout crazy. Congratulations, Red Deer, you've officially lost it. Got one here, we got one coming up over there. Today's gonna be a good day. Uh, it's getting a lot warmer a lot quicker. At the roundabout, or, take the third exit. Getting a lot warmer, quicker, I should say, quickly. And I've got a coffee here, so that's good. I mean, what else, what else do you want from the day, right? Other than no roundabouts. These roundabouts sort of kill the day, kill the mood. Especially when it's so busy like this. Why is it so busy? Middle of the day, everyone's going out for lunch or what? Give her, bud. Give her. Give her, give her, give her, give her, give her, give her. Good boy. Right now, I gotta wait for me. Like, this is nuts. Like, traffic lights, I think, would be so much safer. No one knows what to do in these things. They're all just giving her, they're just going for it. They're just sending it. Uh, we gotta wait, 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 and we can't get in here because it's just a constant flow of traffic. I don't know, I'm not a fan of them. But I understand, like, apparently they save fuel and stuff, and some people are big fans of them. You see them more and more, so what do I know? Here we go, here we go. Watch out, Trucker Josh has entered the roundabout. Everybody put your seatbelts on, you should have them on already. Put your helmets on. Stay out of my way. All right. That wasn't too hard. Really dislike those things. Have I told you that yet? I don't know if I have. So we're going to be going on Alberta to north. The entrance to the right on Highway to North, Edmonton, Queen Elizabeth the Second Highway. Well, you said it's so much more fancy than me, Karen. That's not fair. Yes, this is Queen Elizabeth II Highway. I think every province has a, a highway named after Her Majesty. In Manitoba, there's a, a main avenue in Winnipeg that's called Queen Elizabeth Way. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II Way. Sorry, you gotta add the second in there. There's a lot of them. That's right in the city. Here, this this is the town or the, the road that connects Calgary and Edmonton. We're entering Her Majesty's Highway. It's very nice. Very, very nice. Fit for a royal. Look at this. Continue on this road for 134 kilometers. I'm surprised they let me drive on it. Wow. This is a royal highway. I think when she comes to visit Canada. Whatever road she drives on, or the main route she takes with her little motorcade, I think that's the highway that just gets named after her. Because that's, I'm pretty sure that's why they named Queen Elizabeth Way in Winnipeg, was when she visited Winnipeg a while ago, who knows when, uh, she, her motorcade went down this one road. And what do you know? Suddenly, right before she got there, the signs changed. They changed the name of the road. It was called Queen Elizabeth II Way. So she could drive down her own road while visiting us. And then we just left it that way. Why would we change it? That'd be rude. So I'm guessing she probably came to visit Alberta at one point in history. She's been queen forever. And she probably took her motorcade down this road between Calgary and Edmonton. And they named it after they named it after her for her visit in her honor, and I'm guessing that's what happened. I don't know. I, I, I actually have no idea. I'm just, that's a guess. 
I think this driver here on the right has a beef with that little Honda Civic in front of him. He's backed off of him now, but he was riding his rear end. Wow. Now we're going to go straight, Karen. I told you already. This guy here was literally six inches from that Civic's bumper. As soon as I open my mouth, one kilometer, take that exit happens. 27, break into DR, 184, street and end, slight right in 810 meters. Oh well. In 800 meters, take exit 27. Yeah, it doesn't DR, 184, street and end, slight right in 800. I'm not turning there either, Karen. How do you not know the best way to get there? Why are you taking me the long way? Much quicker if we stay on the bypass. We're going around the northwest side of Edmonton right now. We're grabbing our lumber right away. Karen has no idea how to get to where we've gone like a thousand times. Unless I got someone to talk to, I guess. In 600 meters, slide right on Edmonton South, 184 Street. She doesn't really hold the conversation very well, though. She likes to dominate the conversation and control the conversation. So uh, I can never talk about what I want to talk about. She always wants to talk about, you know, directions and stuff. I'd like to talk about other things sometimes, but... Is this an ambulance in front of us? What is this thing? I need to get over into that right lane real soon. There's a Honda... Th not a Honda. Really? Wow. There's a Chrysler 300 that will not let me in. There you go, step on it. There you go, acceleration. There you go. Thank you. So what's this? Oh, big piece of plastic flying around there on the right. Yeah, what is this thing? What is Epcor, providing more. Providing more what? Whatever it is, they're providing more of it. out now. Oh, we were talking about that yesterday in the vlog, right? How these old orange lights are being replaced with those new LEDs. That's what they're doing there. Oh, cool. I wonder what they do with the old bulbs. I don't know, just throw them out or probably sell them off to some other place. I wouldn't doubt it. They'd probably sell them to someone. Well, we got ourselves reloaded. It actually turned out to be a really nice day, and we made it down to Lloydminster, Alberta, which is right at the province, uh, the provincial border with Saskatchewan. I was pretty tired. Uh, this is the next morning now. I was pretty tired last night. I just crashed. I got here to crash. I slept for like 10 hours straight. It was a good sleep, but I'm feeling really good now. I've got my coffee. I'm ready for a new day. But I want to show you the load that we picked up first. A load of lumber. It's nothing fancy or anything. It's not like you'll be like, ooh, never seen that before. But it is special because it's on my trailer. Bunch of Canadian lumber. Going down to Iowa. So we are going straight there, which means that we're crossing through at uh, Portal, North Dakota. We're not going home again. It's two times I've had to skip past home on the way through because I'm uh, taking time off for Christmas. So I've got to make sure I'm boogity boogitying right now so that we can uh, afford life next month while still celebrating the greatest season of all, Christmas. So there's one time a year where I don't negotiate, I don't compromise. 
Christmas. You know, Easter's important to me too. Thanksgiving's important to me too. But there's something about the Christmas season. There's sort of like, you know, uh, something in the air, the Christmas spirit. Maybe as a child, it was more of a, more of like a magical season to me, or maybe things are just changing. I refuse to let them change because when I was a child, this was the happiest time. Everyone was happy, no matter what. It was just a time to spread cheer, to make other people happy, to help others, to give to others. The Christmas season's all about giving. It's not about receiving. As a child, of course, it's hard to, uh, <laughs> It's hard to give, but you have to. I was taught as a child over and over again. You know, it, it's nice to get gifts, but Christmas is about giving gifts to others. So, uh, you know, it's about a season. We do shoe drives and stuff, uh, shoe box drives, which means we'd fill shoe boxes with toys and Christmas stuff for kids that were, you know, orphans or uh, unfortunate. They were they just didn't have a family, maybe poor families. Uh, we'd we'd make it possible that as many people as possible could enjoy Christmas even if they couldn't afford it and I, I think that's what the season's all about it's just spreading happiness reminding people who think that nobody cares reminding them that there are people who care about them reminding people and, and putting a smile on their face and making everyone around you making sure that everyone you meet everyone you come in contact with has a positive experience in that moment where they're in contact, even if you don't know them, even if you're just passing them on the street, flash them a smile, reach out a hand, shake a hand, say hello, say Merry Christmas to as many people as you can. That's what I remember it as a kid being about, and now as an adult, I refuse to let that change for the next generation. We're trying to have kids ourselves right now, and my kids are going to feel the same way about Christmas I did when I was a kid. And that, that's really up to me. It's up to me to teach that and pass that down, right? If you don't pass down these traditions, well, they don't just, you know, they don't just pass themselves down. I don't know what I'm to, you know what I mean, right? You got to keep them alive. You got to keep them alive and you got to be, gotta be, you got to be happy. It's a happy season. So that's why we hang up the Christmas lights. That's why we decorate our houses. To remember what the reason for the season is. To remember that there is a light in the world. And it's up to us to spread that light and that cheer and that joy around. Especially in the Christmas season. We should be doing that all year round. But the Christmas season is sort of a celebration of that light within us. That light in the world. You know? It's an annual celebration. It's uh been 2019 years since the first Christmas so I'm gonna leave that uh, leave that there and I'm gonna start tomorrow's vlog because you, you we got to film some stuff tomorrow we got to leave here and head out on that road looks like it's gonna be a good day I wanted to get a bit of an earlier start than this I I'm kind of disappointed in myself I told myself I was gonna get up at like 7 a.m. before the Sun and yeah we're gonna get an early start ah, I woke up at 8 and now it's nine o'clock the sun's up that's okay it's gonna be a good day and i can't wait to see you tomorrow in tomorrow's vlog don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it we make a new video every day take care thanks for hanging out